You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Every Tuesday, we talk a little recruiting with Shay Dixon on 3, the Bengal Tiger. He's with us now. Shady, how are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you, Matt? I'm doing well. Uh, let's start with the giant news from the weekend, which is that Jakeem Stewart, the, the five-star number one player for the class of 2026, we now know has reclassified. Uh, our guy Jarrett Roser uh, over there with you guys at On3, the Bengal Tiger, broke that news. Um, let's just start with the, the catch-up. How, like Jay, how do you officially reclassify? Like, how is he able to get to that point? It's really, I mean, by and large, going to be course load um, and all the different uh, classes you have to take that transfer to each school that you're interested in, and then being able to log that amount of credit hours in time to be, you know, enrolled in college a year earlier than you should have, uh, more often than not. We'll see guys take summer courses and all that, but uh, if you've got it all lined up, then you can sign in December, just like most kids, or pretty much every kid who signs in December, uh, but may not you know may not be an early enrollee and graduate uh, until later. Now the caveat here is that at this point, Stewart says that he plans to sign on December third and then enroll to college in January. So. However, they have set up uh, his course load this uh, this fall, and or whatever he's done to get to this point, uh, I guess uh, clearly has them in a spot where they feel like uh, he's going to be able to not just ink in the early signing period, but start practicing with a college team, uh, you know, for spring ball. What do we know about? So he's ineligible to to play at Edna Carr this season. What do we know about what his recruitment is going to look like from here until the December signing period? So he's going to take a handful of visits. He'll be at, uh, and it's to the who's who of usual suspects that we thought it would be at LSU, Ohio State, Oregon, and USC, Southern Cal. Um, he will be in Eugene this, I guess that's this weekend, right? Ohio State game? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So he'll be at that one. He'll be at LSU for the Bama game on November 9th. Uh, he will be in Southern Cal when they play uh, Nebraska, which is in November as well. I think that's the week after LSU's game. And then Ohio State when they play Michigan, November 30th. So uh, a slew of great games to check out before uh, the end of November. And then a few days after that, he'll sign with the college. Um, do you have any idea, Shay, where LSU stands right now? Is there like a a ranking, a pecking order for Jakeem Stewart right now? I think that the from to everyone I've talked to, there's nobody who's saying, hey, look, this is a thousand percent done. He's staying in state or that he's going to this school and, you know, it's already locked in. I think that Ohio State, uh, from the start, is the one school that's gotten the most visits outside of LSU, if we're talking top contenders. So you've got to circle them. Uh, he's been close with Larry Johnson. That staff's made him a big, uh, and Larry Don Johnson being their D-line coach, but uh, that staff has made him a big priority. So they're in the mix. I know Oregon's kind of always had his attention. Um, Eric Henderson and New Orleans native being at USC really got them into the fold. But I remember Steve Wilfong told me that he thought it would probably ultimately come down to LSU, Ohio State, and then maybe an Oregon toss in there if not a USC, but that wild card team. Uh, but Matt, I don't think if he were to come out tomorrow and send down to LSU and Ohio State, I don't think anybody would be shocked by that. Um, how much look NIL is always going to factor into decisions for prominent players like this. Um, and the interesting thing for me, Shay, is whatever LSU's NIL budget is, we know they have a lot wrapped up in Bryce Underwood and DJ Pickett and Harlan Berry, obviously. Well, now, Stewart reclassifying at 25 would seem to complicate that. Can you work us through how NIL might factor in to Jakeem Stewart's decision, where LSU, how competitive LSU might be able to be there? I, mean, I think they're going to be as competitive as needed. We're talking about a kid who uh, certainly, um, with the long-term upside, is considered... A five-star right now, a great prospect. Now, look, 
not many guys have done the only played one year of high school football and it been their sophomore season. Um, he was ineligible as a freshman when he got to St. Aug. So the reality, like a guy like Don McKinley, a five-star, you know, granted he had some turf toe you know, battles or whatnot, but it's not like he came in and is on the field every second, you know, and, and some guys do, but I think there's an understanding that comes with this, that, hey, this might take a little time, you know, might be a year, whatever, but he's going to have to get back to the routine of being at a practice and playing in games and all of that. Uh, but I do think that uh, one thing that we kind of look out for right now, Matt, is that uh, I don't know if that affects NIL. I just think that at the same time, his the selling point will remain whatever it was before. I don't think those discussions just began began now because I think there's been this idea that he, he could reclassify, and if he does, are we ready for it? So I don't think that'll be a deterrent for LSU. I don't think it'll be a deterrent for Ohio State or Oregon or USC. So uh, we'll see how things unfold there. I think the biggest thing, Matt, and look, he's an early signee. Had he stayed in the 2026 class, and this will be the case for everyone, you might be moved into a revenue share by then. And mm-hmm. LSU's kind of with a few other teams ahead of the curve where they've already kind of approached NIL, knowing that that's on the way and kind of preparing for how that's going to look. And uh, I think that's served him well. Look, once again, you don't, the top three classes in the country right now are Bama, LSU. Uh, and then I believe Ohio State uh, and then Georgia's at four. Those schools get the best players uh, normally, yes, and now they're getting the best players in the NIL era. So uh, I think LSU's certainly finding a way, no matter what it is, to to find that right recipe and, and get some big guys that many of them involved bit probably pretty big NIL numbers. Uh, Frank Wilson obviously is a St. Aug grad. I and a lot of people have just drawn that connection because of Frank Wilson to Jakeem Stewart. Jay, it seems like everybody out of St. Aug over the years LSU's wanted, when Frank's been involved, they've gotten. I know Jakeem Stewart's at, at Carr now, but how big of a role is Frank Wilson playing in Jakeem Stewart's recruitment? Uh, the biggest of any coach that's out there recruiting Jakeem Stewart. Uh, I mean, you don't have the connections he's got at Aug, the connections he's had in New Orleans, and of the people around uh, Jakeem and his camp, and now him going to car, look, he didn't go to IMG, he didn't go to some out-of-state school, he didn't go somewhere else in Louisiana, he stayed in the city, ended up at car. And if you were to make an argument of which school is Frank most tied to in New Orleans beyond all, it's car. So uh, I think the work done behind the scenes here uh, by Frank is, is what Scott LSU in a great position, you know, compared to just, hey, look, he's an in-state kid, and you take it for granted. They put in a lot of legwork here, but let's be real. They've lost kids out of New Orleans before for whatever reason it might be. Uh, and if Jakeem says ultimately, hey, I want to go somewhere else, NIL or not, uh, if it's all in the same ballpark and he chooses to go elsewhere, uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. But right now, as it stands today, I think that LSU wins out, and I would think that Frank would have a pretty large hand in that. He's Shea Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger on Twitter, X at Shea Dixon. Be sure to give him a follow. Let me ask you about a couple of other guys here. Uh, Shea, last week we talked about Jacob Bradford from Catholic High, the safety uh, four-star. Took an official visit, the only uncommitted prospect to take an official visit to LSU this past weekend. As we know, he's currently a Houston commit. Uh, What's the latest there? Might we be trending towards seeing him flip to LSU? Yeah, we are set to, uh, Jarrett Rezer, uh, who you mentioned earlier at the Bengal Tigers, set to catch up with him tonight. So we'll be able to hear from Jacob and see what he said about everything uh, tomorrow on the site for those interested. But uh, my gut tells me that he probably ends up in this class. And uh, what Catholic High has been good to LSU over the years. They've recruited a number of guys out of that program, including a current starter, uh, and obviously have had pretty high interest in uh, both Bradford's uh, brothers, now that they've both been offered, uh, as well as some other young guys on the team. They've got good connections with that staff. I just think it ultimately comes down to what Bradford wants to do. And, and he gave that commitment to Willie Fritz and, and this new, I was about to say Tulane, this new Houston staff. <laughs> right. uh, and they've got a lot of Louisiana kids committed. But uh, I think LSU has shown sincere enough interest uh, and kind of laid out a plan to where uh, between now and signing day that uh, the idea of staying home and getting to play at LSU and developed into uh, a guy who can help them out that, uh, that that ultimately wins out. Look, this is um, kind of the last of uh, a handful of guys we'll talk about in this 25 class. Um, look, 
there will be others that pop up, but they want to sign 25 to 30, and they're at 26. So uh, not many spots left to fill between now and signing day. It's more about just holding on. Jay, one guy that's been in the class since January, of course, is the number one player in the country in Bryce Underwood. Over the past several weeks, the I don't know how much validity we should even give this, Shea, but I did ask you about the Dave Portnoy comments. For those that don't know, Barstool founder Dave Portnoy offered between $1 and $3 million a year to Michigan to be able to sign a quarterback. Obviously, Bryce Underwood is in the state of Michigan, and so that's been one targeted. Another Michigan uh, media person, content creator, late last week up the ante, he said he'd throw in a million on top of that to get it to four. When you start to hear these numbers, Shay, I think it's realistic that anybody, Bryce Underwood or anybody, would at least have to consider it. Um, do you have a reaction to this whole situation uh, in, in LSU's maybe ability to to retain Bryce Underwood with all this chatter? Uh, I guess here would be my response is that uh, Portnoy makes content for a living, right? So this is stuff that moves the needle um, and... Do I think he's serious? Yeah, I think he loves Michigan. I didn't think he would give them their money to go find a quarterback. Now, we talked about this, the whole, I'll, I get to pick the quarterback. Well, no coach is ever going to go for that. You even said it. Um, you know, none of that would work. But if he were to say, hey, look, I'm going to donate it to collective, but I want an understanding, hey, look, go find a good quarterback, that even if they were to be deflating the game with it, uh, I don't think that they're making, kind of moving the needle on I think if he's giving that in this hypothetical world, Matt, he doesn't want to say them say, well, let's take this high school quarterback who already had the opportunity to go there and didn't, and the NIL money was strong with the current staff they have right now. And then you look at LSU, where he ain't coming here for free, right? And, but he's also coming to be developed. He said, look, I know that, yeah, NIL exists. Great. But the NFL, how we've laid it out, a first-round pick, a top-ten pick, is making light years more than that. And show me Michigan's track record right now. Well, they hand the ball off all game. Show me LSU's. And I know we're living in this reverse 180 world of LSU was Michigan forever, right, during the Miles era. Well, now the, you're putting out number one offenses last year. Jaden and Joe are tearing up the NFL. And a guy like Bryce Sunder would use that as, oh, look up, Gus Myers leading the country in completions and touchdown passes. Looks like they develop pretty well. They have first-round receivers. That sets me up better to get to the biggest paycheck. So I think Underwood's kind of got a long-term focus here, not a very short-term one, while also thinking that Portnoy probably has a short-term focus, which is, and I'm giving you a bunch of money, go to the portal and get me someone who wins next year. Mm. Uh, it's good perspective, and um, I think we'll all exhale when Bryce Underwood, uh, the ink dries on the letter of intent uh, come December the 3rd. This is December the 3rd? Oh, I think it? everyone involved in LSU Athletics yeah. will be exhaling uh, on that day, yes. Uh, Shay Dixon on 3, the Bengal Tiger. Make sure you get over there if you want LSU recruiting news. That's where you get it, on 3, the Bengal Tiger. He's on Twitter, X, at Shay Dixon. Thanks, man. Yes, and I talked over your December 3rd, early signing day. The, the early signing day on December 3rd. I'll be right. Thanks, Shay. All right, now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.